It's April 3rd and back on April 3rd, 1982, Atari created Pac-Man Day to celebrate Pac-Man coming to the Atari 2600. And we're going to celebrate by playing this, the Pac-Man Connect and Play Plug and Play system. And as you can see, this thing's a monster. It's very large. You have an A button, a B button, nice clicky joystick. That's probably high quality micro switches inside. That's usually what it means. On off switch, got the red light indicator, but where are the wires? How do you connect this thing? Well, actually, to connect the Connect and Play, you have to take off this pack, which is a little bit stubborn, but not much. And there's the wires inside, a little notch that you could pull it through to play and put the back back on. Standard RCA cables with the mono audio runs on four AA batteries. So let's go ahead and take the Pac-Man connect and play plug and play system. Let's hook it up to my TV and see how it holds up today. Let's go to the games. The Pac-Man connect and play was published by Bandai and came out in 2015 to cash in on Pac-Man's 35th anniversary. It contains 12 games accessed by a simple menu screen where you can also see saved high scores for the games that stay saved even if you take out the batteries. At any time when playing a game, you can and hold down both the A and B buttons together to return to the main menu. The first game is the classic and fun Pac-Man, as you would expect. The second game is Super Pac-Man, where you swallow keys to open doors and can eat a super power-up to turn into the massive Super Pac-Man, who could go through doors without keys. It's not as good as the original, but it's still a fun game. The third game is Pack and Pal, a follow-up to Super Pac-Man. You now have a ghost pal that can help you clear all the items, and eating certain items gives you the ability to press a button and fire a paralyzing ray at the ghosts. Again, it's interesting, but not as fun as the original. The fourth game is Pac-Man Plus, which is basically a hack of the original Pac-Man. This game has a faster pace, the power pellets sometimes have different effects, and eating the bonus items acts like a power pellet, but it also turns the ghost temporarily invisible. It's fun, but I still prefer the original. The fifth game is Pac-Man 256, and it actually starts you on level 255 of the original Pac-Man. If you manage to pass the screen, which is no easy feat, you will go to the legendary and glitchy level 256. So it's not really a full game, but a fun skip ahead. The sixth game is Mappy. As I've mentioned many, many times before, it's not my personal cup of tea, but I know a lot of you really enjoy this game, and it's a worthy addition here. The seventh game is New Rally X. It's a maze game with you as a car collecting flags while you avoid other cars, sometimes using smoke screens to stop them. Again, I'm not the biggest fan of this one. The eighth game is Bosconian, a free moving space shooter where you blast giant ships by either shooting a collection of its parts or hitting the sweet spot. In the arcade version, you could move in eight directions, but here you can only move in four, which is a bummer. Interestingly, it seems that every plug and play I reviewed this game on, including the Pac-Man Retro Arcade plug and play from episode 409 and the Namco Pac-Man TV Games plug and play from episode 257, both by Jack Pacific, also use four-way joysticks, which I didn't realize until viewer Matthew Henderson pointed this out to me. Thank you, Matthew. The ninth game on the plug and play is Xevious, one of my favorite old-timey space shooters, but this is one of my least favorite versions of the game for two reasons. Once again, you can only move in four directions as opposed to the original eight due to the four-way joystick. The second reason is when I play Xevious, sometimes I like to hold down both buttons to continue firing both my air blasters and ground bombs, but doing this here will actually send you back to the main menu. Boo! The tenth game is Dig Dug, where you defeat enemies either by blowing them up with an air hose or dropping rocks on them. This is another one of my favorite old-timey arcade games, and it plays well here, although it does scroll the screen. The eleventh game is Galaga, a classic and fun early shooter. What more can I say? The twelfth game is Galaxian, a groundbreaking shooter when it came out, but not one I enjoy much today, as its sequel Galaga surpasses it in many, many ways. Overall, the graphics and sounds feel close enough to their arcade counterparts for my taste, although some purists might notice some differences. Family friendly wise, Bandai recommended the unit for ages 4 and up. Currently, you could still find these in some major stores and on major online sites for about $20, give or take. So what did I think of the Pac-Man Connect and Play plug and play? On the plus side, the games look and sound good, and the four-way joystick works very well for most of the games. My guess is they used four-way joysticks in Pac-Man style plug and plays such as this one, because four-way joysticks tend to work better than eight-way joysticks for those type of games. I also like being able to try to get to level 256 in Pac-Man by starting on level 255. On the minus side, the AV cord could have been longer. The shape of the unit can be uncomfortable to hold at times, although sometimes I didn't notice it. 
And for me, the version of Xevious included was disappointing. It would have also been nice to have Ms. Pac-Man included, but apparently there's some sort of legal issues that prevent us from seeing the arcade version of Ms. Pac-Man on Plug and Plays today. So in the end, this is a pretty good Plug and Play, but it does have some drawbacks for me. So where am I going to rank the Pac-Man Connect and Play Plug and Play? Well, first I'd like to compare it to my number one Plug and Play, the Pac-Man Retro Arcade by Jack Specific. Both have 12 games, with the only difference in those games being that this one has Pac-Man 256 and the Retro Arcade one has Pole Position instead that uses an awesome setup where you twist the knob to steer and let me tell you that absolutely rocks. Personally, I'd go with the Retro Arcade version since it looks cooler, has a dedicated menu button, and is more comfortable to hold. But most of all, because Pole Position is just a blast to play with the twist knob. Really, it's awesome. So where will the Pac-Man Connect Plug and Play end up? really close to the original Ms. Pac-Man and regular Pac-Man TV game plug and place released by Jack Specific many years ago. I'm not going to put it over the Ms. Pac-Man plug and play at 10 because it actually has Ms. Pac-Man and a better version of Xevious on it since it actually uses an 8-way joystick and it also has that awesome twist knob version of pole position. However, I do like the game selection more than the regular Pac-Man TV games plug and play at 11. So out of the 33 plug and plays I've now ranked, the Pac-Man Connect plug and play is going into the 11 position. Personally, I'd recommend tracking down the Pac-Man Retro Arcade Plug and Play by Jack Specific, but the Pac-Man Connect Plug and Play might be worth picking up if you find it for a good price. At least that's what I think. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Also, please click like and subscribe and follow me both on the Facebook and the Twitter. I'm also a member of the Retro Junkies Network. At this time, I'd like to thank all of my extraordinary Patreon supporters, including fellow YouTuber Grey Defender. Thank you, GD. If you appreciate the work I do and enjoy my videos, please consider becoming a Patreon supporter by signing up at patreon.com slash gamer starting at a single dollar a month. Not only will you help make videos like this possible, but you will also gain access to some exclusive content and be able to vote on future games I review. Thank you for giving me a little part of your day, and I look forward to seeing you next time on the next episode of the No Swear Gamer. Take care, everyone.